Take it easy. I'm okay. Don't feel any pain. But that's what bothers me. If I can't feel anything, then what does that mean? Don't give up, Jill. I'll take care of you. Whatever you do, don't let that virus beat you. Alright, so this is the only portion of the game where we actually take control of Carlos. Carlos has two weapons, the Merc's handgun, which has 15 bullets, just like all the rest of the other handguns in the entire game, and the assault rifle. The assault rifle has two modes, fully automatic and manual. Manual is more of like a burst fire, which shoots three rounds, and fully automatic is, well, exactly what it sounds on the tin, fully automatic. And he comes with an ink ribbon, which we won't be using, so we're just going to chuck that in here. Alright, so the objective here is to make a vaccine to cure Jill. There's some zombie here, so you can just kind of walk around them. And there are more zombies in here. You just kind of want to dispatch of them. So you have safe passage through this door. And just move forward. It's really funny because Carlos, like the stupid mercenary, is the only person in the entire like Resident Evil series who actually makes a vaccine for the damn T-Virus. Like, you make Vigil this, like, poison to damage that gigantic plant in Resident Evil 1, and, like, nobody else makes any vaccines in the entire game. I just, I really think that's funny. But, a plot point here in Resident Evil 3 is basically used later on in Resident Evil 5 because Jill was infected with a T-virus by Nemesis. It remains dormant in her system for a pretty long time until, you know, the whole Lost in Nightmares thing happens and Wesker takes her in and it's just, I, I just really thought that was stupid that they used that as an excuse to give her you know, blonde hair, like, that's just, that's just so dumb, it's so dumb. But here's the hospital, and for some reason in here, the Umbrella Corporation decides it's okay to just store one part of the vaccine used to create this virus that they want to use to take control of the world. Now, I'm not sure if that's just the regional version of this game that I have, but in this game, that hunter was actually supposed to cut that zombie's head off, and it didn't happen in this one. Which is really unfortunate, because that's a really fucking awesome cutscene to introduce an enemy like that. If you didn't know, hunters in this game, and all previous Resident Evil games, can kill you with one hit if they do that leap attack. Same as liquors, but there are no liquors in this game, if you're on caution. So, just, you know, don't be on caution. So this is a safe room. There's absolutely nothing in here. Just keep making your way forward. Over here, there are handgun bullets. I remember the first time I played this part. Like, this was the pretty much the first Resident Evil game I had ever played. So I didn't know anything about hunters, and I didn't, I, you know, I didn't really know what they could do. So I just used the handgun on them, and it was like horrible. I died in like two seconds. So use the tape recorder, eh, tape recorder on this. To be a slight fracture in his right arm, just below the elbow. However, and why they would just leave a tape recorder around a voice recognition system is just, I don't know. It's really convenient for this game, but this is one of two possible panic scenarios, and it unfortunately happens here. So basically, there are two possible outcomes. If you go to the top floor or the bottom floor, depending on what the random game gives you, zombies will burst through the elevator. If that happens, just take your assault rifle out and unload on them. There are still more coming, so don't think they're dead. There's still one more left. Yep, there he is. And I want to save some of that assault rifle ammo because we're going to need it later. So he's dead. And I mean, you can use your handgun there, but it's just safer to use the assault rifle because it's a gigantic gun that shoots plenty of bullets. So why not use it? Nikolai? You're still alive? 
saw what happened. What's going on? I'm one of the supervisors. That's all you need to know. Wait! <laughs> so, <laughs> I, so I always thought that part was funny. Because Nikolai gets shot out like a fucking torpedo through that window. And it's like... How how did he fly so perfectly through that window? Like, I guess he jumped through it to avoid the explosion, but it just looks like he got launched. Like a fucking missile <laughs> through it. And it just always makes me laugh whenever I see it. So we have the sick room key. And that's all we needed to go into that room for. So in this room, there's a possibility of there being either zombies or little wiggly things. So we'll see what's in here. And this time it's zombies. So you move forward, and that zombie gets up. Oh no, he bit me. Alright, that one's dispatched of. Combine your ammunition. And just take this guy out. He can't get up, so... And over here are some green herbs. So just take those, mix them together. And this is another one of those really stupid puzzles. If you take a look, once I exit this status screen here, this shelf over here is a key part of the puzzle that we need to uh, basically remember the location of for the next room. This is also one of those things we need to remember, those numbers, because it's the combination for a safe. So we come over to this room over here, and we no longer need this key, so we go in here. And basically we have to push this cabinet in the opposite place of where the cabinet was in that other room. So in this case, it would be on my right here. So just move it. Move it as best as you can if Carlos wants to even fucking push it. There we go. And just push it onto this little pressure plate here. I think those pressure plates are reused from Resident Evil 2, just colored a different color. But that knocks this painting down, and there's a safe here. So the combination was 5... oops, that's not the combination. The combination was 513. No, that's not it either. 513. Or was it 531? Three one. Okay, it was five three one. And it's the vaccine base, which is one of the three parts we need to actually make the vaccine for the T virus that's currently swimming around in Jill's body like tadpoles or something, I don't know. So open this elevator up, turn around, and now we're gonna head down to the basement floor. Alright, so equip your assault rifle because hunters may or may not be in this corridor. And just listen. I don't hear anything, so we should be okay. Alright. In here. Yep, there are the hunters. And this one usually gets stuck because the AI in this game is fairly terrible. And let's just blow that up. And we're good to go. So over here, if you go to the basement first, Nikolai comes over here and blows this safe up. But we went upstairs first, so we didn't get to see that cutscene. I personally just prefer the grenade cutscene because he gets launched out of the window. So this is the medium base. This is the second part of the three parts we need to make the vaccine. You come over here, you turn this breaker on, and because it's a Resident Evil game, it completely drains the tanks of those two amphibian hunters so we have to set the medium base in this machine here and the PC, bleh, the PC version has a really weird bug with the sound so everything just keeps playing but the solution for this puzzle is really easy it's one then you go down below a and then you go back up and three and that sets the levels correctly And you get the vaccine medium. And then you just combine the vaccine base with the vaccine medium. And you get some awesome purple drink.
Don't even bother fighting these guys, just get the hell out of here. Because they can't do anything. And now that we have all the parts we need, we can just leave here. Oh, there are hunters here. So that's one. The other one's going to be running towards this. Oh, that's weird. I've never seen that death animation on a hunter before. Oh, that one died too. That was a really big explosion. Holy crap. So let's head on... Oh, jeez, I'm getting... Oh, man. My controls got reversed there for a second. That's really weird. So we're going to head back to the first floor. Oh, there's hunters. Oh, God. Am I on caution? Yeah, I am. That's really dangerous. We have 10% of our assault rifle bullets left, so let's head on out of here. And I think I said this before, but if you're on caution, and a hunter does its leaping attack, and it hits you, you will die. It's a one-hit kill, and uh, basically kills you. It beheads you. So, oh no, I don't know what to do. I'm so scared. Basically, you just gotta run through these doors. I remember the first time that I played this game, I actually, I actually did not know that you had to just leave the hospital there. I thought you had to defuse the bomb, and you only had like six seconds. So, like, for the longest time, I would get up to that part and not know what to do, and I would just keep dying. And it was just so frustrating. So, that hospital's blown up, but that's okay, because we never need to come there again. So now all we gotta do is just get this vaccine back to jail. And there are some zombies. Don't even worry about them. Just run around. Oh, spiders again. Another set of enemies we really don't need to worry about. So just keep on heading back to the foyer. And once we get to a certain part, an old friend will pop up. It's Nemzi! What's up, man? So he's looking a little bit worse for wear. All that damage that happened to him with the fire and all that. Kind of messed him up. But that's okay. All you gotta do is just run away. Over here, you have to make sure that you run straight for this chapel room. Because if you don't, and Nemesis gets there before you, you will get a game over. And I've had that happen to me before as well where he just kind of ran after Jill and ignored me and it sucks because I try not to save as much as I can in this game and uh, that really doesn't work out so well when you just get a game over like that are you okay yes barely what's going on no way that monster just doesn't give up what I thought we killed that thing no it's been waiting for you he's playing with do you think that it's unstoppable? No, I don't think so. I'm sorry, Jill, but I've got to go take care of a few things. Oh, and bad news. Nikolai is still alive. Nikolai? Are you sure? Yes. I don't know how, but I do know that he is our enemy. Remember, don't trust him. Okay, so Bill's... Yeah, Bill. Oh, this isn't Left 4 Dead 2. Or Left 4 Dead 1, actually. Bill's back... Ugh, I keep saying Bill. Jill's back in action. So we can drop this grenade launcher off. And I'm just going to grab a full heal item here. And equip the eagle. So once you get to this far end here, Nemesis bursts through. Ignore him. Don't even try to attack him. Just go through the doors. Oh no. Oh no. I'm getting stuck on stuff. Oh god. So Nemesis is still pretty mad that, you know, Carlos got to feel Jill up and he's jealous. So he kind of wants some revenge. Just keep running through the doors and avoiding him. All the spiders despawn because Nemesis is chasing us. And now that Carlos moves that bell for us because we're a weak little wimpy girl, we can proceed forward. And... Oh no. Ah, oh, I completely forgot to take the lockpick with me. So yeah, don't do that. That is the one thing you never want to do. Is forget to take the lockpick at this part. 